Hi, it's Carrie. In today's 5-Minute Friday, I wanted to address a common question that I get when I'm helping people with systematic review or evidence synthesis searches, and that is, well, it's kind of a two-part question. How many results should I be getting? How many of those results should be relevant? So the first part of that question, how many results should I get? There's no answer to that. It depends on your topic. And that's why pre-searching and understanding what's been written about your topic is important. Like you wouldn't just decide on a topic, sit down and see it through all the way to completion. No, first you're going to do a little bit of what I like to call poking around and see, are there enough studies on this for me to be doing evidence synthesis in this area? That's the first part. There's, there's no right answer to how many results you should be getting for a systematic review or other types of evidence synthesis. The things you'll want to consider are, do you have a team? You should. Is it feasible? Um, like, I wouldn't consider 30,000 articles to be feasible, but I would consider 3,000 articles to be feasible. Um, and then somewhere in the middle, you know, it's, it's really up to you and what your capacity and your team's capacity is for completing that work. Now let's talk about the second part of that question. How many of your records should be relevant? And here I have pulled up an article from 2011 in the journal Research Synthesis Methods by Margaret Sampson et al. And I don't have access to the full article, but maybe you do, so I'll make sure to put a link in the video description. But I do have the abstract, and here's what they did. They looked at a cross-sectional sample of 300 Medline indexed systematic reviews, and they pulled out those that reported the flow of bibliographic records throughout the review process, where the ratio of the number of included studies and the number of unique retrievals could be determined. Overall and median precision of the search was calculated. Precision could be calculated for 94 systematic reviews. The median precision was 0.029. Implications, search precision of approximately 3% was typical in this cross-section of health-related systematic reviews. This finding is useful for systematic review teams to gauge review resource needs and for information specialists in evaluating their searches. So remember, and this is Carrie again, that when you have evidence synthesis work to do and you have a search done, it doesn't mean you're gonna do this search and that all the records that come back are going to be relevant or that even most of the records that come back are going to be relevant. They have to be screened and they go through a two-step screening process, first by title and abstract and then by full text. Just to demonstrate that, I've opened up PubMed and I've pulled up the search that I've been using over and over again for the past couple of months, which is a search that I created on a theoretical review topic of pressure, injuries, and patient positioning in the intensive care unit. Now, if I recall, this gets around 300 and some results, so let's see. Good, 302 results. They're sorted by most recent, so they're not sorted by relevancy or anything like that. So what would we expect? We would expect to see maybe around 3% of these to be included based on our inclusion and exclusion criteria. So absolutely keep in mind that evidence synthesis work, yeah, it's a lot of work. And the reason is because you're looking for all available evidence. And when you run your search, you're going to have 97% not relevant or potentially not relevant and maybe 3% relevant. So that's really something important to remember. And especially if you're working with a librarian, because I think a lot of times librarians get the like, oh, you know, these results don't look good. Well, no, they don't always look good, but you have to dig through them and see. That's the whole point. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.